Hey everyone, this is Dr. Pokins. Uh, today, week 13, chapter 2, homework questions submitted through the discussion forums. Uh, so, number 2 talks about least precise. That means least uh, ex exact reproducibility uh, is low because the guesswork is high. A beaker is going to have a large surface, so when you fill it up, there's a lot of guess when you fill up a beaker. A burette's a very tiny tube. We use that uh, here in a few weeks, a couple times, and a couple labs coming up. A very small tube, so very little guesswork there. Pipettes, very tiny. Use those uh, to measure exactness uh, very well. So they're very reproducible because they're very small. And then a graduated cylinder, even a 50 mil, is a very large tube, uh, but still not as large as a beaker. So the beaker is going to be the least precise because it's got the largest opening to measure any kind of volume compared to the others. Number nine says the closest number of grams equivalent to pounds. Uh, it's important to know how many grams are in a pound. That was in the uh, lecture notes itself. What we know is that there are uh, 454 grams per one pound. So if we know 0.745 pounds uh, is there, we can just use a conversion here and say that one pound is 454 grams. Pounds cancel. That numerator denominator idea is going to be carried through the rest of our semester. So in our calculator, 0.745 multiply 454. We get 338.23, uh, uh, and that's right here. We had three sig figs, so we kept three sig figs. Uh, number 10 says a thousand yards is equivalent to lots of stuff. So, in this one, we need to get to something we do know. What we do know on this one uh, specifically is that one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So if we have a thousand yards, we need to get rid of yards. In one yard, there is three feet. Get rid of feet. One foot, there are 12 inches. So again, yards cancel, feet cancel. Now we can use what we are given in the lecture, and that's that for every one inch, there's 2.54 centimeters. So now we're actually in centimeters, and notice there's no uh, centimeters there. If we were to stop at this point uh, here, we could get inches, and there's an inches value over there. So if we do uh, 1,000 in our calculator times 3 divided by 1 doesn't do anything, times 12 divided by 1 doesn't do anything, the answer at this position here, if we were to hit equals, is 36,000 inches, so definitely not that one. Now we have two meters and two millimeters. Well, we're in centimeters, so if we want to go to either one, that takes one more conversion. So again, inches cancel, centimeters cancel. Uh, in one meter, there's 100 centimeters. So if we were to, again, 1,000 times 3 times 12, and then times 2.54, we get centimeters, which is not a choice. We divide by 100, we get 914.4. Uh, so at this position here, um, when we divide by 100, we get 914.4. So this is meters. So we have one that's meters here and meters here. If we put this in the scientific notation, we take it back two spaces. That's 9.14 times 10 to the power of positive 2 meters. And that's going to match. So we don't even have to check the other ones because we know they're already wrong. Number 15. Number 15 says, uh, for the measured value, for the measured value 6.73 pounds, what is the degree of uncertainty? Uncertainty is always the last number. The last number is the hundredths place. So you're going to be looking for two decimal places 
after the decimal, and that's going to show up here. We got one and two. Just like we have here, we have one, and then we have two. So that uncertainty lies at that last number, that three, is the guess of any number. It's always the last number. The last significant digit. Uh, 18. 18 says, which of the following numbers expresses 2,600 calories exactly and correctly in scientific notation? Well, what's most important about this number is the decimal is shown. If the decimal is shown, that means they didn't have to show it, but they did. They did because both zeros are important. They are significant. So the only one that has both zeros showing is the one that has to be correct because we have four significant figures here. Because of the decimal place, otherwise we'd only have two, the two and the six. Those other ones would be placeholders. We would call those leading zeros. But because the decimal is shown, they're all now uh, trailing zeros. And the only one that has both zeros is the one that we want for number 18. Number 21 is a perfect introduction to our new chapter. Uh, week 14 talks about moles. And this is the first problem with moles that we've seen in a while. Um, we've seen them kind of scattered out. That's because we've jumped to later chapters before the next chapter that we're covering in actual textbook. So here you take your 128 grams. You have a conversion between moles and grams. You just need to make grams cancel. So if we have 128 grams, um, make sure that cancels on the bottom. So this is grams of copper. So make sure grams of copper cancel on the bottom. On the periodic table, is where they found this, that's 63.546 grams per one mole. And when you get five, you get the answer that one. So clear your calculator, 128 divided by 63.546. You get uh, 2.01 moles. So 2.01 moles is what we want. So if you can do this, you can do a tremendous amount of week 14 homework because it's a lot of the exact same stuff. Number 26 is very important if you cross the border because those speed limit signs are a little bit different. So when you look at this conversion here, you'll notice that both of them are per hour, so we don't have to change time. We just have to change distance. So if we have 60 miles per one hour, that's just a conversion. We need to go to kilometers per hour, so we need to get rid of miles. And the only way to do that is to put it on the bottom. And when you do this, you need to know a conversion of miles are several. You could use the ones in yards, you could use the ones in feet. One mile is 5,280 feet, or it's 1,760 yards. Feet's a little bit faster. So in one mile, um, 5,280 feet. Miles canceled. Speed is not kilometers, so we keep going. We know that earlier we did a problem where inches go to centimeters, and that's what we're after. If we go to um, feet, we need to get rid of it, so can't cancel it by putting it on the bottom. In one foot, there are 12 inches. We get rid of inches, put it on the bottom. Notice the repetition of that kind of unit cancellation process is the most important feature of all chapters that remain in intro chem. In one inch, there are 2.54 centimeters. So we're in centimeters, we still need to be in kilometers, so we're close. Get rid of centimeters on bottom. And one kilometer, we need to know how many centimeters. We can use our metric table for that. So if we have one kilometer, we put a one here, and then we'd add zeros all the way over to center. So in this case, three zeros, so that's 100,000. So 100,000 goes here. One zero per column, with the one in the kilometer uh, category. So in our calculator then, everything on top is multiplied, everything on bottom is divided, so 60 times 5,280 times 12 times 2.54, and then divided by 100,000. So 96.6 roughly, so 97 over 1. 
So if you go to Mexico or Canada, there's a good chance on the speed limit signs you'll see 100 kilometers per hour because that's pretty close to what we call 60 in the States. Uh, just remember that if you go 100 miles per hour in their country, you're probably going to go to a jail and get deported because that's way too fast. Number 30, dietary energy requirements for an adult is 2,000 kcals per day. Notice that's the uh, real value. We call this capital calories in that Twinkie example in the lecture. Um, we would see that capital calories is different from calories, it's actually kilocalories. So this is making hopefully perfect sense. Uh, when we do 2,000 kcals per day, we need to go to either joules or kilojoules. Might be easier at first to go to kilojoules, and then if we have to, scale back to joules, uh, because kilo and kilo are in the same uh, category of size. So if we have 2,000 uh, kcals, we need to get rid of kilocalories by putting it on the bottom. Notice that's almost exclusively what we do in almost all of our problems, and that's the point of saving this chapter to now instead of introducing it earlier and then not doing it for a very long time. Uh, one kilocalorie is 4.184 kilojoules. If we take away the Ks, the conversion still works because they're still in the thousands place, just converted. So whether it's joules to calories or kilojoules to kilocalories, it's the same conversion, 4.184 to 1. So we multiply 2,000 times 4.184. We get 8,368. 8,368 is here. So this is 8,368 uh, kilojoules. We have the decimal place one, two, three. That's the power of three. And then they rounded the six based on the eight to a seven. So 31. 31 says the density of steel is 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed. The mass is 10 centimeters cubed. Uh, what is the mass? So remember, density is a triangle. So density is a triangle. This is one of our several triangles. Density is mass over volume. We have density, that's 2.7, and we have volume, which is that 10.0 centimeters cubed. <coughs> so uh, volume goes here. Notice the number that is missing is up top. So if you cover up your value that you want, that's just density uh, times volume. So mass is density times volume. So that's 2.7 grams per one centimeter cubed. That's our conversion. And then we have 10 centimeters cubed. Don't even need a calculator for this one because it's just 2.7 times 10. Uh, notice we have two significant figures versus three. Um, the one here is 27. Probably an extra sig fig there, and that might be a mistake in the textbook, but it's the only 27 that we have to choose from. 32. A liquid boils at 68 Fahrenheit. Uh, what is that equal to in Kelvin? So, conversions of temperature, we did that in the lecture. It's also in the PowerPoint. Uh, if you take 68 degrees Fahrenheit and you subtract 32 Fahrenheit, that corrects for the scale itself. We need to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius because only Celsius can be converted to Kelvin. Fahrenheit cancel, it's on top and bottom. It takes 180 degrees to span the same 100 degrees from the melting point to the boiling point of water. And we type this in to get Celsius. This is not the answer. Might be a choice just to see if you take the bait. So first parentheses, uh, 68, subtract 32, close parentheses. New parentheses, 100, divided by 180. There's a faster version of this in your textbook as well. Nine over five, or in this case, five over nine works. You reduce by 20. Uh, so in this case, the answer is 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, which is not a choice, so that's good. And then we add 273 to convert to Kelvin, and we should get the answer to 293.
a lot of telemetry conversions. This is probably the toughest one because you had to do two to get to you know, 34 talks about centimeters squared to inches squared. So this is an area to an area. So if we have 5.20 inches squared, we have to get rid of inches twice. If you get rid of inch once, the square goes away, you get rid of it twice, the inches go away. We want centimeters, so centimeters times centimeters would be centimeters squared, and that's what we want. Now we just need a conversion, and we've used this one for now the third time. One inch to 2.54 centimeters is an exact conversion. So in your calculator, 5.20 times 2.54 times 2.54, uh, 33.5, and that's what we want. Number 36, 100 meter dash in 9.8 seconds, that's our conversion. So notice this is a number to another number. So 100 meters per 9.8 seconds is a conversion. It's just hiding in the problem right here. If the world record holder uh, runner uh, could maintain that same pace for five kilos, good luck with that, um, what distance would they cover? So we started with five kilometers and we want minutes. So what's important about this is to realize that minutes is the answer, so seconds needs to be on the top. That's the only way your time is going to be maintained as the final unit. So if we start with our uh, five kilometers, we need to get rid of kilometers. We already know that if we go to meters, we can cancel meters using the conversion of the 100 meter dash in 9.8 seconds. We just need to get rid of seconds and go to minutes. Notice how everything cancels top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom like it should. In one minute there are 60 seconds, so the only thing missing is meters to kilometers. Kilometer is bigger, so give it a one. Use our metric table, kilo to meter, that's adding three zeros, so that's just a thousand. So a thousand meters and one kilometer. So we take uh, Five times a thousand in the calculator times 9.8 divide by 100 and then divide by 60. We get uh, 8.2 and that's D. Number 39 says copper's density is 8.96 uh, grams per milliliter. What does that mean about copper compared to, in this case, water? Well, water has a density of 1.00. So if water has a density of 1.00, that means copper atoms are 8.96 times more squished together in the same volume. That's what makes them more dense. So it's related to that idea of uh, which weighs more, a ton of bricks or a ton of feathers. The joke is that they both weigh the same. But a ton of bricks might be uh, the size of a pallet, or a ton of feathers could be the size of a room. And that's all based on the compactness of the rocks versus the feathers. So in this situation here, uh, copper is going to be 8.96 times smaller, so more compact, in the same volume of water, making it more dense. In this case, 8.96 times more dense. Number 40. And number 41 are the only two heat triangle problems. So these are the Twinkie type problems at the end of our lecture. End of our PowerPoint notes. It's just one large conversion. So let's remind you of that triangle first. Uh, 50 definitely the easier one. Actually, uh, that's the tougher one of the two. It's a two-step problem. So this is Q, which is heat in calories, times mass, times specific heat, times the change in temperature. The problem is we want temperature final, and that's temperature initial, uh, so temperature final minus temperature initial. So we want this one here, that temperature final is what we're after. So it's two steps. We're going to find 
delta T first, so cover it up, we get uh, heat divided by mass times specific heat. So if we're looking for a change in temperature, we want Q on top, mass, and specific heat on bottom. So use your finger to cover up what uh, you want. What's left over is what you need to get there. The voids algebra, anytime you're going top to bottom, that's divide. Left to right, that is multiply. So look for Q. Q is the only uh, temperature, the only energy value there that's 500 calories. Look for mass, that's 10 grams. Look for specific heat, which is water, which is the standard one calorie per gram times degree Celsius. That's our conversion also. So notice calories cancel, grams cancel. If you're on the bottom of the bottom, you're really on the top. If only that were to work in true life, uh, but it does work in algebra that way. So degree Celsius is what we're after. So 500 divided by 10 is really just 50. Didn't even need a calculator for that one. Don't get excited, that is a choice, but that is temperature change, not temperature final. So temperature change is 50 degrees Celsius. That's going to equal temperature final minus temperature initial, which is 20 degrees. We want this one if we add 20 degrees to both sides. Algebra says those cancel, and these give us our answer of 70 degrees. So there you go. Two-step problem, definitely the tougher one of the two because it takes two steps. 41, a little bit easier because it's only one step. So same triangle. Q equals mass times specific heat times change in temperature. Here they want specific heat, so we're looking for this one. So if we cover up specific heat, notice that it's Q on top divided by mass times change in temperature. So specific heat equals Q on top, mass times specific heat, Oops. and uh, change in temperature. We're looking for um, specific heat. So if I notice from our value here is 40 calories on top. Mass is 10 grams out front. Change in temperature is 60 to 20. It's really just uh, 40 divided by 400. So 40 divided by 400 is 0 0.10 calories per gram times degree Celsius. Notice all three units are there, none of them cancel. They're all part of specific heat. Uh, 46 talks about SI unit for mass. So there's lots of units for mass that we see in uh, chemistry. Most of them are grams. The grams are small. And things that are measured in the world are usually in kilograms, which is the SI unit. We tend to convert it to grams quite a bit in class. Uh, but if you look in the notes, there's a table that tells you all the SI units, um, kilogram being the one for mass. Um, and that's all that one. 50. Uh, 50 is two density problems comparing each other. So remember the density is a triangle. Density is mass divided by volume. So D equals M over V. So for this first one we have 80 grams divided by 20 milliliters. 80 divided by 20 is 4 grams per milliliter. So it's probably 3 sig figs. Second sample, same thing, density is mass over volume. We get 56 grams divided by 14 milliliters. We also get 4.00 grams per milliliter. But unfortunately, having the same density doesn't mean you have the same stuff. It just means your density is the same. But it is on the right track to knowing the identity because we know for sure that they could be the same, but definitely more tests like dropping in the acid um, seeing if they precipitate can definitely help out a little bit more. So that's uh, uh, 50. 52, we had one that was just like this before. This one's just two steps because it requires um, a conversion back to joules. So if we have 250 kilocalories, we need to get rid of kilocalories. 
we know that kilojoules and kilocalories were used a moment ago. We said that one kilocalorie is 4.184 kilojoules, and that one's in the book towards the Twinkie example. But kilojoules is not joules, so we need to keep going. Kilojoules and joules. And one kilojoule, how many joules? We can go to the metric table for that. Joule is just another standard unit. So kilo to the standard unit of meter, liter, gram, or in this case, joules is a thousand. It's three columns after the one. So 250 in your calculator, 0, 0.0 times 4.184 times 1,000 gives us uh, 1.046 million. Uh, I need to convert that. Uh, a million is power of six. So here we go with 52. 54, which temperature is not possible? The coldest temperature possible um, in Fahrenheit is about negative 459 and some change. It's almost negative 460. So negative 425 is fine. The coldest temperature possible in Kelvin is zero Kelvin, so five is fine. If you convert zero Kelvin to Celsius, you get negative 273. That's the coldest Celsius temperature, so this one's impossible. That one's more like a Fahrenheit kind of temperature that's possible. And you can go as high as you want. Doesn't matter. This guy's the limit on temperature. That's the sun. 57. We'll float some water because oil is less, weighs less. I almost gave away the answer. Weighs less than water. Uh, remember, that's very similar to that joke earlier. If you float, it's because you are less dense, not weighs less. Well, it's actually a whole lot larger than water molecularly. Um, it's usually a hydrocarbon more than nine carbons in length to make most mineral oil kinds of things. Um, so much, much heavier. Um, so definitely there is false. Um, it should be uh, less dense to float. Uh, 61 milliliter is equivalent to uh, 1 cc. 1 cc is 1 centimeter cubed. So 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter is 1 milliliter. And that's why uh, 1,000 centimeters cubed is equal to 1 liter, because that's also equal to 1,000 milliliters. So that's a useful hint. That same definition, uh, which is true, especially for those that are nurses. The fact that ice has a lower density than water is advantageous to marine life. That is also true. The orca whales, thank you for that because when ice becomes a solid, unlike all other things on the earth, it floats. And when it floats, it insulates the water underneath it so that it doesn't freeze, so that fish and animals and mammals can swim underneath. Uh, if it were like other things that didn't have hydrogen bonding, um, it would sink. And if ice sank, all of it would be ice, there'd be no water, and eventually there'd be no fish to swim underneath. So true on that Sig figs, uh, remember it's all about the zeros. When the zeros show past, they count. When they show two, they don't. When they show two, they don't. When they're in between, by default they count. When they show two, they don't count. So it's only the three at the end. Here, because they're not showing the decimal, it's only the one in the front. So definitely we have one here, the five. And for the other one that was asked, um, 213, that's the three. So pay attention to those zeros. If they go beyond the decimal, they're important. If they're showing you to the decimal, notice if we took this one 2.13 times 10 to the negative three, we wouldn't use those zeros. So again, that's a negative one, negative two, negative three. Here we have a positive one, positive two, positive three. This would be five times 10 to the third power. Notice when we convert to scientific notation, those zeros are not kept. It's an easy way to check and know for sure. Uh, students don't really like this um, problem because they think it's a conversion, it's not. Fahrenheit and Celsius, if you want to compare them, just take your calculator and take uh, 100 and divide it by 180. It tells you that uh, based on that idea, uh, whoops, that's 1,000. So 100 divided by 180 tells you that it's about half and that's what we want. So it's not a conversion, it's a relationship between the two scales. Conversions are a little bit lower on the page 89 through 93. Last question, number 100. Uh, sorry for the huge homework. It doesn't happen too often, but it will happen next week. Sorry again for that. Um, 
Here we want to make sure it's in the right significant numbers as well as the right um, conversion. So go back twice. Behind the one, it's the first non-significant, uh, first significant figure past those zeros that are uh, unimportant. So that's 1.57 times 10 to the negative two. And that's it. So the zeros are not kept because those are leading zeros, they're leading you to the decimal. So watch out for those, those are the ones that do not matter. Notice the one that does is kept. And that's a trailing zero. So keep those. We'll see you next time.